Right, welcome to Talk from the Terraces. Um, joined today by uh, the normal team of uh, Casual Sniper, aka Gav. We've got Martin Wymo Gardner and uh, Anthony Vivian. Uh, first of all, Anthony, um, happy birthday, mate. Uh, was it a good yeah, birthday I've... yesterday? Yeah, it's an almost Saturday, mate, to be honest with you. I don't have them at our age, do we? Mm. How old were you? I was 39 yesterday. <laughs> Baby. Baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <We're talking laughs> okay. no, obviously very many uh, happy returns. Right, we'll crack straight into it then, lads. Uh, we spoke about, obviously, the 9-0 defeat that Bournemouth took um, against Liverpool. Uh, Scott Parker's now been dismissed. So I'll come to you first, Martin. Deserved after one defeat? Out uh, of right. It was a thrashing, right? It was a fucking mullering. Um, look what he did at look what he did at Fulham. I, I, I liked him as a player. I think he knows his football. It's just when you get a drubbing like that, to some people, like whether it's the board or the owners, there's no going back from it. Me personally, I think it was a bit fucking harsh. Yeah, because I, I do like because it's just too early in the fucking season to be getting rid of a manager. You've you've been smashed by a, a, a decent fucking team, you know, a good team that just ran riot with you. But they they they're, they're not a shit team themselves, and they'll come all right. Like I mean, you know, I don't a lot. Of, some people are at the bottom three f fancy him to go down. I reckon there's three worse teams than them that will fucking possibly go down. Yeah, I, I, so, yeah, I, I reckon it's just a bit unfair. Yeah, um, I'll come to you, Anthony. I, I just found it incredibly harsh. Yeah, it, it, it was harsh, you know what I mean? Um, you know what I mean? I think he's done a good job of him last season, brought a back up, what have you. Um, <clears throat> and like, you know, like what I just said there, you know what I mean? He, you're playing a fucking, you know, one of the, the, the top teams in the world there, Liverpool, do you know what I mean? They could do that. You know, Liverpool could do that to a, a team that's finishing in the top ten. You know what I mean? Mm. They, they've lost to City and they've lost to Arsenal, who, who were all up there. Do you know what I mean? I think they had a good result against Villa early on in the start of the season. I think. But mm. so yeah, it's, it's fucking ass. Like you say, it's too early on in the season to be to be fucking sacking the manager. You know what I mean? Um, but that's the Premier League. It's big business in it. Do you know what I mean? We see it every year. We see it every year. Managers getting fucking sacked. Do you know what I mean? Look at um, fucking poor fucking Ranieri there at Leicester a few seasons ago, wins the league, fucking not, not long after. Sacked after a bit of, no, fucking few bad results. It, it's a cutthroat, it's a cutthroat business, this football it's, league. Yeah. There's, there's no loyalty there, there's no loyalty. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I do a feel, a feel for Scott. Um, same here, likes him as a player, I think he's done all right, you know what I mean? Can I just put in and just say one thing, right? Do you know what I think's out of order? When you see Bucky's odds before the season started on the first manager to get to get sacked, that's got a fuck your confidence. Yeah, yeah. Right. Can't yeah. stand shit like that. You know what I mean? So there's, no. there's, they're betting on everything, aren't they? They're betting yeah. on failure as well oh, as fucking okay. results. It's uh, like you say, it's cutthroat. I'll come to you, Gavin. Now, obviously, with Bournemouth, Eddie Howe um, was almost a messiah. He had almost. Um, you know, he was well-loved. He got Bournemouth promoted and then uh, they got relegated and he decided that he had to move on. So, you know, if you're going to... If a person like Eddie Howe has to move on that done really great with Bournemouth, Scott Parker didn't really have a bloody chance after that 9-0 defeat, did he? Well, I mean, Eddie Howe, I always thought he, uh, he could have... Might sound a bit bizarre. He could have ended up maybe on the the out, you know, the fringes of being an England manager. The way he was going, um, but with me, I'm like I say, I'm I'm so not. I don't watch a lot of the Premier stuff. So, but yeah, to see the guy get the sack, I mean, I don't think social media probably helps. I bet there was a big backlash on there. The board probably would have read it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, how many games in are we? It's not a lot, is it? No. And yeah. to uh, yeah, send him down the road. Yeah, and like Wymo um, and Anthony just said, you know, it was against Liverpool. 
It wasn't, yeah. you know, no disrespect. It wasn't against Burnley, you know, or Brentford. You know, it was against Liverpool. They're a they're a top top team. You gotta give you gotta give managers a chance, haven't you? I think um, so. Well, if, you know, if you go back to Man United and Alex Ferguson, he, yeah, exactly. He was going to be out the door. I mean, I would, yeah, that's yeah. when I was watching football all the time. He was going to be out the door. I, I worked with a Man United bloke, and he slated him to death. And I always remind him years later what he said. Oh well, you know, um, 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 yeah, give the guy a chance, you know. But, but it all like good, you say, it? Alex Ferguson, he, he was on his way, you know. He, yeah, oh, he was. You know, the thing is, how, how are you going to get these up and coming managers if you know you straight away they get a result like that and they're booted out the door? And like you know, why I said the confidence thing, it ain't going to do them no favors, is it? If you've got odds on who's going to get sacked, it, it, it's not. Yeah. No, no, it's it's not good. Okay, we'll move on to the next topic, and uh, you've probably all seen this. <laughs> Fucking Jamie Carragher at Nottingham Forest got a bit of abuse and decided to take a fan's phone. Now, I'll come to you first, Anthony. Um, He's he's a pundit. He's well known. He's going to get abuse. He's going to get stick. Does that give him a right to take the fans' phone? No, you know what? I was laughing when I watched it. I thought, you know, the guy was moaning that that character took his phone. I thought, fucking hell, you're lucky. You could have fucking spat in your face. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll see yeah, that. That he has done, yeah. Yeah, but mm. you know, fucking hell, you know what I mean? It's um, it, listen, that guy gets a lot of shit. You know what I mean? It does get a lot of stick. Um. Gonna blow his fucking lips sometimes, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? To be fair, you know what I mean? So it is what it is, you know what I mean? It's fucking like I say, I think they're making a big thing out of it. He took his phone off him. I think the steward tried to get it straight back off him, didn't he? And passed it yeah. back. Fucking hell, you know what I mean? It's not I don't think the guy's gonna cry over it. He's fucking slating him, aren't he? Do you know what I mean? But oh well, fucking Jamie Carrigan, eh? <laughs> I think it's it's just the fact that did he have the right to take his phone off him? I mean, we're all kind of guys that if he took the phone off us, he would have probably got a fucking right hand, wouldn't he? Let's have it right. Yeah, he's, no, he's, listen, he's, he's, you know, he's not got the right hand, you know what I mean? He's in a position where, you know what I mean, he should be able to sort of control his temper and, you know what I mean? He, he knows he's going to get a stick. He knows he's going to get a stick everywhere he goes, you know what I mean? Um, and he should be, he should be, um, should be able to hold that down and what have you. But, you know, he's a human, you know what I mean? Imagine, yeah. you know, the same, same, same goes for you know what I mean? If if we were taking shit, you know what I mean? We probably fucking want to took his phone, we probably would have given that would be react. You know I mean? So, yeah. so, listen, but on both parts, you know what I mean? I think, I don't think it was no big air, just fucking laugh it off, you know what I mean? It's like I say, he took his phone off him. If he would have spat in his face, it would have been a different story, wouldn't it? I, I mean, it would. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it would have been a completely different story. Uh, I'll come to you, Martin. With Jamie Carragher, I think he's he's Marmite, isn't he? You either like him or you don't. And uh... he, know, right, he knows his stuff, right? But that's just he's just given Gary Neville more ammunition. Yeah, you know <laughs> I mean? he has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, I'm like you, fucking Balen, and yeah. he's a fucking scarsman. But he, he he knows his football, and all he's done. Ronaldo did it a few fucking was it end of last season. <laughs> He smack that fucking kid's phone down, that, that, that look on his face and that, that. They've just got to fucking suck it up. And you just, have to, yeah. But you've got, a, you've got a few feet to fucking walk. You, not every fan there is going to fucking like you if the home or away fans. If you're a home fan, you've had a good result, they're all over you like. And if you're a home fan, you've had a fucking shit result, they're all over you. You're, they're, they're looking down. Ronaldo was looking down. I've seen a phone gone like that. Carragher's just done the same. They need to fucking grow up, not really. And they've got they've got a duty and they've got a responsibility as well. Like, and yeah. just make, in my eyes, they make themselves look at it and they're just uh, setting themselves up for a fucking yeah, massive yeah. fall. No, uh, you've hit the nail on the head, boy, mate. They they've got a, they've got a duty and a responsibility, and they get paid a lot of money. So they they need to act above the norm. Um, it's as simple as that. 
I'll come to you, Gavin. That obviously there's been a lot made of him taking the fans' phone. But if you remember at if you remember Eric Cantona, he fucking tried to drop kick a fan. Um, yeah. at a match. Yeah. yeah. You know, so <laughs> him taking a phone, is it as bad as everyone's making out? I I didn't even until you sent me the, the you know the, the message about about this, um and I had a little little look. I wasn't even aware of it. Um, and then, of course, it linked me to the spitting bit where he spat at the woman right? and, and the picture. And um, I thought, yeah, I mean, he, he sort of dodged a bullet there. What did he, he leave Sky for six months or something? Um, a lot from what he earns, is it? Six months suspension? No. Now, fl- <laughs> let's flip that over, right? I deal with the public every day and I meet some right twats, you know, and you've got to bite your tongue. And I know for a fact, if I did anything like that, I'm down the road. End of. Mm. And I won't work for that company again. That's it. You know? Um, yeah, they, they live a pretty... Um, privileged. Lifestyle, don't they? Yeah, you know? Privileged life, yeah. Yeah, privileged life. That's it. So, yeah, you've got to... Like well, I said, yeah, they've got to grow up a bit and, and deal with it, haven't they? You're going to get all that. It's part and parcel of the job they're doing. And yeah. you can't... You can't have a hissy fit. You know, I, like I said, I get idiots every day. I deal with idiots every day. And you just gotta you gotta do the best you can to be polite and, and move on. Yeah. You know, if he's, got, he's, got that, he's got that history, you know. As soon as he does something, now he's done he's done that once before, all that spitting thing, they're gonna come for him. Anything like that, they're gonna come for him, aren't they? Oh, they're bang on him now. Yeah, yeah of course they are. Yeah. They're gonna you know, wind him, wind you, him you'd have thought. Yeah, I mean, look, let's go back to Cantona. He was crucified, you know, yeah. absolutely crucified, wasn't he? Um, yeah. And yeah, uh, and his speech about seagulls following the boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, but he, they, he is they, a Cantona. Sardines are going to get, I oh, just thought yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, he <laughs> took the piss, didn't he, really? But <laughs> yeah. There yeah. you go. All right, we'll move on. And I, I've, uh, I've seen this on social media and I wasn't really aware of it. Um, and I think it might have been you, Gav, that mentioned it um, last episode, saying about the cost of living crisis. How are people going to afford to take their kids to football or even go oh, yeah, to the themselves? Well, now football clubs, um, um, especially lower league football clubs, are actually saying like they don't know if they're going to be afford to able to run their clubs. You know, because if you imagine how much it costs to run floodlights in yeah. a big game, I mean, yeah. this cost of living crisis, it's affecting everything, isn't it, Gav? You you think, right, a lot of these non-league clubs have gone through lockdown yeah, with nothing coming in. You know, they've still got to look after the pitches. They've still got to do stuff like that. We're now heading, we are heading, heading for a massive, massive recession, aren't we? There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, People are going to struggle, you know. It's not good times. And um, if it's the choice between heating your house, buying food or going to football... What are you going to do? What's going to give? Yeah, what's We've going to give? Match, <laughs> hey? You've got to go to the football, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah, it, it, realistically, um, yeah, people aren't going to be able to afford it, are they? No, I mean the, the the bills. Something something in this country is going to give. It has to. You, it you has can to. you can you can feel it burning yeah. up. You know, it's a tinderbox waiting. And if something isn't done soon, I mean, this isn't just about football. This is about the whole country. Oh, you can it's, see it it's, coming. This is about society, but obviously, yeah, it is. You you just put people society. through yeah. through two years of lockdown away from their, and now we're getting walloped with this. Yeah, and they're saying, oh, we can't do nothing. Can't do nothing about it, you know. It's yeah. and it is going to hit these clubs. It is going to hit these clubs hard, even from Especially the Premier right now. Yeah, yeah, lower league, but all football throughout because you know people might go. They might pay to go in, and then they might think, "I can't afford to go and buy a few pints. I can't afford to do this, do that." You know. Um, no, you're... at the moment the attendances are quite good with non-league. I mean, I've been to a few games this week. You know, quite good, but yeah. Um, when this really hits, October comes, the winter. Yeah, it's no, not good, is it? Yeah. Um, okay, I'll come to you, Anthony. There, I read 
And I don't know how true it is, because uh, you never know with fake news. They're on about doing earlier kickoffs, so they don't have to use the floodlights. I mean, is that really an answer? Um, probably not, no. Um, I don't know if it's going to be that fucking hard, like, you know what I mean? Um, so, like, so there's going to be no, no sort of, like, midweek games, you know what I mean? Um you're going to need the fucking floodlights, like you say. If it's a three o'clock kickoffs, what are you going to do? Change it to fucking one o'clock Saturday yeah. afternoons. Um, no, if, if, if you know, it's, it's, it's just like fucking, um, like Gav's just said there, it's, you know, it's, it's fucking really hard, really, you know, to look at sort of. I mean, like you say, I've seen someone on social media and it was it was a bill, a company's bill, and it was two, two grand um, and it shot up to 22 grand. So that, that, Company is going out of fucking business basically, and like it's, it's going to be the same for these lower league clubs. Um, like I say, just a, just for everything, just a fucking you know, the hot dog, are the hot dog, can you afford to put the fucking hot dog stands on? No one's going to be buying them, are they? Do you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Everything, it's everything. Not about floodlights. No. Like I say, yeah, but it's the fucking floodlights. You know what I mean? It's. Um, God, can I just I jump in there? Just, just thinking, right? Something we were talking about this the other day at non-league. Now with Porchy, we've hardly got many midweek games, midweek evening games. Now, whether or not when they done the league, the fixtures, they looked at this and thought, this is coming, we're not going to have as many evening I love the evening games, but we've hardly got any. Yeah. Whether or not they knew this in advance and have sorted out the fixtures, I don't know. I might be grabbing at straws there, but it seems a bit odd. You know, I mean, last year I was going virtually every week to an evening game. There's hardly any. So yeah. it could well be Maybe that. Maybe that's... You know, they've looked at this. I'll come to you, Martin. Even if you're talking about electricity to, you know, to run the floodlights and to actually run the club and to run the change rooms and all that lot, then even the people that have, even the away team, they've got to afford the fuel to get there in the first place. You know, yeah, and no if, fuel's and gone up, like God knows how much. And if this thing did come in, like, you know, like, all right, we don't we don't want to use floodlights. So earlier kickoffs, it'd mean away fans come in fucking early. There's only one person going to benefit out of that. And that's fucking Weatherspoons. Uh, yeah. yeah. Fucking fan, fans arriving at fucking nine ten o'clock to get a few scoops down for one o'clock. I don't think that's going to work. No, what I reckon is uh, is is got to happen is like a movement of the fucking people for everything like. And there is talk about it, things like this. It's like there's demos going on and things like that. Like, and I'm not sure if that's going to be enough, like if it's going to fall on deaf fucking ears mm. because they don't seem to listen to us fucking public anyway. It's no. just all about the hierarchy and the elitist and that lot. Like, I mean, it needs, to, I'm all up for these fuckers striking, right? Yeah. I went past one the other day. I don't know who it was. They're all in orange and that lot. Like, and I bid me all, and, 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 you know, there was one giving it the fucking that, and I'm like, fucking, yeah, go for it. I didn't even look who the fucking were. I'm just up for any bastard striking at the moment, like, because they've taken the piss for so long, and this country is going to grind to a halt. You can't just expect us to take to take it and just fucking shut up, put up, put up and shut up and, like, and do fuck all about it and, and, and stay silent. And get, this time, I mean, I don't know what's going to give, but, like, you know, something has got to fucking give. I mean, I'm not saying, yeah. Yeah. We need My to problem is with this we country, to... right? This country, and there's one problem unity. Until you get the whole people en masse, now this you could, you could go into divide and conquer and all stuff like that, you know, where the media will spin things. Look, during lockdown, all the, all the trouble in London. Divide yeah. and conquer. It's either got to be everyone stop fucking working. Don't use public transport. Don't use the trains. Don't go to work. Don't just don't fucking. People you know, won't do it, will they? They won't what? do it. That's the problem. Because they exactly, won't. Exactly. Yeah. Go, it takes you going back to the minor strikes. You'll yeah. always get fucking scabs. Work. So yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't fucking know. It's, it's either all in or nothing. And you know, exactly. with the with the marches and stuff. The one thing with the marches is it it causes awareness and begins. Yeah. It, it sort of begins the ball rolling a bit, you know? Um, That's all it does. Yeah. Well, something needs yeah. to be done. But yeah. you, you you, really, I mean, you need it on a massive scale. But I think once, scale. 
I think obviously when people are deciding whether they can heat their house or eat or um, even their pastime of going to football, I think this might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. I really do. Something, something's really got to give, you know. Yeah. Um, you're going to get to the point at Christmas, aren't you, where people are thinking, I can't afford to buy Christmas presents. Exactly. You know? Yeah. You know, what are you going to yeah. do? Uh, won't be able to put the lights on the Christmas tree for fuck's sake. <laughs> well, yeah, there's, there's all, you know, people are on the bread line. That's it. You're right. You know, it's, it's mad. It's as simple as that. Right. I've, um, just before we finish up, I've, uh, just interviewed Andrew Pot Porter of Burnley Suicide Squad. And, um, he's done, um, he's done a part one, which is all about Burnley this time was um, part two, which is all about him um, and his England travel. So this is a question to each of you. And uh, and I may have asked you already, Martin, but I'll ask you again anyway. Um, club or country, mate? Me, club. Club, all day club. long. All day long. Yeah. All day long. All day long. For you, Anthony? Okay, mate, club, so we've been so we've been city for me, mate. Um it's just me week in, week out, bread and butter, mate. Um don't get me wrong, mate. I've you know fucking been to watch England, you know, sport England and what have you, you know what I mean? Proud to be English, but so we've been fucking city, mate. Always been city. And for oh, you, Gav? Yeah. I used to go and watch England, but take it or leave it now. Um obviously me and Pompey parted ways. Yeah. That's another story. So now it's just Porchy. Yeah. Yeah. Up the porch. So yeah, that, that's it for me now. You know, and we've we've already had discussion about uh, this next World Cup in Qatar that not really anyone can get excited about. I don't know if I'll get more excited about it the closer it gets. Um, I'm not really sure, but I don't know about you guys, but um, I can't really name that many people in the England squad. I, you know, I used no. to know, you know, when it was Gaza, Minica and everyone, I used to be able to name them. I don't really know that many people in the England squad now. Do you, Martin? Could yeah, you uh, quite, quite, quite a few of them. Like, yeah, lot, we've got a, we've got some good young fucking players like Calvin Phillips, uh, Bukayo Saka. There's some good players. We'll, we'll do all right, like, there's up and coming. Yeah. And, 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 and the fodder is fucking slowly but surely going. It's a young squad we've got now, like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's doing all right. I think, I think, I'll come to you, Anthony. I think because we've got a young squad, I think we can only get better, can't we? Yeah, I think, I, I, from, you know, I think we, we have improved, you know what I mean, with getting, you know, younger players in. And I think, uh, I know we, we spoke about Southgate, whether he's the right man or not, but I think... Uh, for me, I don't think he's been scared of giving the young players a chance, you know what I mean? I sort of like let, let him jump in and let, you know, sort of like the, the players who've been in the past with the Eagles, let them go. I just let yeah. the young players come in and, and they seem to have enjoyed it, you know what I mean? I think we've, we've, we've done a little bit better um, letting the young players come through, you know what I mean? And they seem to be a little more, you know, a bit more hungry for it as well, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I, and I think. This um this penalty shootout, even though they missed the penalty shootout, that ghost seems to be getting further and further away now. Um, you know, so I think this this England team can go on 
And we have said if Southgate's the right man for the job or whatever. But if he gets the team playing, then fair enough, isn't it? You know? Yeah, definitely, yeah. You know, but we need um, to win. We need to win a fucking tournament or a competition at some stage. We can't keep coming fucking second. No. You know what I mean? You like of Germany, France, Brazil. It's always the same fucking ones. Come on. It is, yeah. The country, yeah. country could do with a lift through that as well, couldn't it? Well, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, massive, yeah. I'm surprised we haven't talked about VAR this weekend as well. I'm not oh, going to go no, into don't it. Don't even go there. Okay. That's yeah, a mess, yeah. mate. Well, I, I've seen on Twitter it, it it's called liver VAR pool. <laughs> uh, did you see? Did you see the West Ham Chelsea one? Yeah, yeah, and I mean, to me, VAR was always brought in to make the game better. Now I don't know about you, Martin, but it seems to be making it worse. Uh, man, there's been some shocking fucking uh, last three or four days. And then they'll go to they'll go to the manager who it was in favour of, like Thomas Tuchel. You know, who's just like, yeah, I see it was like foul. What is the problem? You know, it's like, <laughs> fuck <laughs> hell. He's got he's got that fucking massive ear. He's got Wi-Fi built into that fucking ear. I I'm think he you. has. Yeah, these impressions are class, aren't they? We had the Mark Martin's last always week. got to get. I think what we'll have to do, Martin, is we'll have to give you a special spot every week of Martin's impressions. No, no. He does a whole <laughs> show with someone. Great, you know, we really will. But Anthony, do you agree that that Vars it hasn't improved the game, has it? I, I can't remember who it was. I was watching him. Um, it's definitely improved it. I was, I was watching him. Um, the ref, who, who, what game was it now? The referee basically got the fucking decision right. He went to VAR. VAR told him, "No, you got it wrong." Um, so he fucking backtracked on himself when he. He should have gone with his, his first instinct. It's, so, yeah. It's like the fucking guy who's in VAR is, um, you know, they're making fucking errors anyway. Do you know what I mean? So why don't, why don't we just fuck off and leave it to the referee where, you know, it was a referee's decision. Because either way, he's still, he's still getting talked about. He's still getting the wrong fucking decision with all the fucking bollocks in between. So why don't we just fuck it off and just let the referee make the decision like yeah. everyone was happy with and all that time. Do you know what I mean? All I agree with is, you know, the goal line decision when the goal, when yeah. the ball is over the line. Yeah, yeah. That I agree with, right? That's you know, what it can, should be used for. Fucking see it, that yeah. group, but you know, if it's oh, is it when I've heard it? Is his toe? Is it? Is he it just touching it by a toe? Touching it by a fucking toe. Yeah. <laughs> his shoelace is offside. It's, it's yeah, exactly. Fucking, you know it's I mean? fucking ridiculous, and I don't, I don't know again if this is fake news, but I've heard. The people that are looking at this VAR and making these decisions, they're not really football people. Oh, well, that's not a surprise, is it, really? Yeah, That's exactly. not a surprise. You know, and it wouldn't surprise me if that is the truth. It it re it, it, it really wouldn't. Probably because... some little tech wizard, isn't it? Probably some little tech wizard who sits there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Some little yeah, boss. Like you say, if he's... If, like, you're saying he's offside by a shoelace, then... I absolutely agree with you, Martin. The only time VAR should be ever used is if the ball crossed the line or not. Um, it works in different. It works in different sports, cricket, doesn't it, and things like that. I mean, horse racing. You've always you've always had that with the photo finishes, but um, football, it's it's just a mess, absolute yeah. mess. I know it, it, kills, it kills the game. It kills the game. They're all standing around. You know, it just yeah. It's got like American football a little bit. You know, when you're waiting for a yeah. far decision. It's yeah. like, you know, you've got to wait around. You don't know if it's a goal or whether you should cheer or, you know, whatever. It it it, it seems to be spoiling the whole game. Vars it's crap. Look that again. It's crap. It's crap. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um... Can I just add something? Can I just add something? Yeah, um, next sure. Sunday at Porchester, um, there's a charity game for a club store at Steve Ramsey. His son was taken very ill a little while ago. Um, so if anyone get along there, it's a Porchester versus a Pompey eleven. Five to get in, um, yeah, to raise money for Steve and his family. So yeah, a little shout okay, out there. We'll, yeah, we'll good shout. Link in the description, Gavin, for that. Um, I will do. Yeah, I'll pop it up on my Twitter. So uh, yeah, um, it, all right, mate. Good course. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, as ever, um, it's been interesting. Always like to hear an impression off Martin. Last <laughs> week it was the Mancunian. 
this week it was uh it was Tuchel is he's German, isn't he? Ah yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah yes. Okay, so we'll be back next week and uh and there'll be more videos coming from UK Casual soon. Take care, brilliant. Thank you.